I took the uh, main amplifier out and I actually managed to uh, get it all hooked up. After a lot of uh, bending and forcing things into place, I managed to get these uh, these connectors to uh, hook up in reverse. So I can finally do some uh, more testing because with this thing, the main amplifier mounted in the receiver, there's just not enough space to do anything because you know things are getting into the way and you're just risking to short things out accidentally. So I got that done so we can now finally uh, take a bit of a closer look using the scope. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for all your advice, all your uh, ideas that you left in the comments on the last video about this. Now basically two categories Category number one, people telling me to replace random components. Like, you know, I got comments telling me to replace all the capacitors, yet again. I got comments telling me to replace all the resistors, to replace all the transistors. So, uh, don't really want to do that, because uh, if I do, well, I may be able to fix it, but I'll never know what the problem actually was. Category number two were people requesting uh, more info. You know, they wanted to see more waveforms on the scope and more measurements, etc., etc. Well, now I can finally, uh, with this kind of a setup, I can finally provide all that, hopefully. We have the frequency generator hooked up. That goes into the main in of the receiver. We have the uh, leads of the scope hooked up to both channels and uh, all identical settings. And as you can clearly see on the screen, the signals are so identical that uh, you can't even tell any difference. Now, if I uh, just change the uh, position of this uh, the one channel, there you can see it. Both traces are there, they're both identical. Let me go ahead and uh, move these test leads over to the uh, speaker output. As you can see, we got much more of a signal. Let me look at that. The quiet channel. Let me, let me uh, check this once again. I now have the quiet channel disconnected. I'm hooking it up to the input. This is what we're getting. I'm not pointing the camera at the screen. That's what we're getting. About uh, two and a half divisions in each direction. I knew I'm now move it over. We are... We are getting three divisions in each direction. Peak to peak. So, as you can clearly see, there really isn't much in the way of amplification at all. Now, if I change this... Uh, around a little bit so that we can see what's going on. Fit both traces on the screen. Okay, we now have uh, one channel to 500 millivolts. Let's bring the other one down to 500 millivolts per division. As you can see, this is the channel that appears to be working fine and this is the quiet channel. You can see how much of a difference there is. I center that once again. There you can see it. There is definitely something wrong. So, once again, i got my schematic, and going by that, I guess, I'm just going to see where the, uh, where the input signal goes, and I'm just going to compare it. I'm going to compare the two channels, and eventually we should get some sort of a difference. So anyway, I guess the first point that I'm going to test is the base of uh, the input transistor. Okay, well that went quick. Got it all hooked up. Looking a bit adventurous. And look at that. The good channel has quite a bit of an offset. The blue channel is the bad channel, the quiet channel, and uh, that's definitely having some problems there. Well, I just thought I found something, but as it turns out it was just uh, probe making bad contact. I'm now measuring the base of uh, the second one of the two 
transistors in that differential amplifier thing and also in this one as you can see the uh, yeah, it's basically it's it's this kind of an offset I'm always getting this offset I uh, I also got it at the emitter up there I don't know if uh, if something fails to block DC it uh, it has to be a capacitor, I'd say. Well, good news, everybody. I found the problem. It's my fault, I will admit that. These two capacitors, um, they had extremely short leads. Now, I was quite confident that the leads were going to be just long enough to make some good contact with the solder, but as it turns out, mm, nope. That was not the case. Um, now, I was stumbling across this capacitor here. It was just kind of sticking out of the board, although I clearly remember that I really had, a, had to stuff it into there to get the leads to uh, to come through. So I was like, well, okay, that can't be right. And I moved it about a little bit, and what do you know? One joint is just completely loose not making any contact whatsoever. So I put in this little uh, thingy here as a temporary bridge, but apparently uh, it only fixed the problem partially, because um, the behavior did change, I did see that on the scope, but uh, it still wouldn't fix the problem. Well, I now stick it in. I can just connect this capacitor to the resistor next to it, using this and uh, as you can see we have the scope here it's not triggering I know that but it doesn't matter we got the silent channel we got the loud channel if I uh, move this um, my little wire around in there let's see if I can get it here we go here we go fixed it for some reason it, it wouldn't do that before I'm gonna go ahead and uh, replace those two capacitors yet again. And that was one hell of a stupid problem and even after I found it, it uh, I didn't uh, really manage to fix the amplifier at first, so I didn't really check the time, but I think I kind of messed about with this for something around three hours. So, uh, gee. And the one time I already had a major accident where, I don't know, I shorted out something and I got one hell of a huge, great, big, blue spark. I already thought that was it, but, well, was not it yet. <laughs> you can never know. Got the uh, speaker output hooked up. One final test. So we uh, put in our bridge channels get identical. We remove the bridge. It's uh, basically the same as it was before when we started the video. The capacitor that we are talking about is uh, this one right there, C706. The plus lead came loose uh, and uh, that resulted the uh, DC offset adjustment, I believe that's what that is, uh, to just kind of uh, float around. It's just connecting that to ground and, well, without the capacitor, as uh, we've clearly seen in this episode as well as in the last episodes, without that connection, this whole amplifier is just all over the place. Okay, had the whole thing apart yet again, and hopefully for the last time ever. Replace the two capacitors once again, now have some little uh, Nichicon brand caps in there, as you can see on both channels, and uh, they have much, much longer leads. I mean, I can compare that. These were the ones I had in there, and you can see we really had, oops, really had just some very, very short leads on that. The one capacitor actually, as soon as I touched it with a soldering iron, it actually fell out. The new ones I now have in here, they have much longer leads. So. Yep, lesson learned. It's not going to be a good solder joint unless you can see the other end of the wires sticking through. Okay, so I now have the whole thing powered up. It's all hooked up again. We are monitoring the input. As you can see, it is all identical. 
So if I now go ahead and uh, move my uh, test leads over to the speaker output, I have one channel, oops, that's a little sensitive, right there, and now well, might also as well change the other one. We now move this one over, so we look at the scope, we now have exactly the same output voltage, or output volume much rather. Uh, well, maybe not exactly the same. You can see the one channel, um, it is slightly, uh, slightly higher and level. You can actually see it sticking through behind the blue. But that should not be nearly as much of a big issue uh, as uh, what we had before with one channel just uh, pretty much doing nothing in the way of amplification as we've seen at the beginning of the video. So, now I can finally uh, put this back together and it should all be working fine.